Hi everyone, and welcome to this Critter Tutorial Byte for Oxygen Not Included. As always, make sure to check out the Critters Tutorial Byte if you haven't already, for an overview of the Critter and Ranching mechanics. This Critter Tutorial Byte is about Drekos, a strange, crawling, sheep-like critter. They are very useful, and can be sheared for reed fibre or plastic. Drekos are found in the Corsic biome along with balm lilies, pinch of peppers, and their preferred chlorine and hydrogen atmosphere. There are two Draco morphs, the Draco and Glossy Draco, and both are quite useful. That's because Dracos can be sheared for reed fibre, and Glossy Draco sheared for plastic. The difference between the two is their diet, as Glossy Dracos are made when they eat mealwood. Both morphs live for a very long 150 cycles. So first up is the Draco, the default morph. This morph prefers slightly hotter temperatures, with a livable temperature range of 15 to 110 degrees Celsius reflecting their diet. Like pips, they eat growing plants, either the balm lily, pinch of pepper nut, or mealwood. Eating mealwood is the way to make glossy Dracos, and for Dracos, balm lilies are definitely the food of choice, as they don't need any fertilizer when grown domestically. Both Draco morphs drop 3,200 kilocalories of meat on death, the same amount as a hatch or slickster, but they reproduce more slowly so aren't typically ranched for meat. They also excrete phosphorite that has some handy uses, such as fertilising wheeze warts and pincher peppers, feeding shine bugs, or making refined phosphorus. And of course the main reason to ranch them is for the reed fibre that can be sheared from their coats. Reed fibre is very useful for making and maintaining Atmo suits, but is also used for clothes, carpet tiles, paintings, and the space material insulation. The glossy Draco is a little colder than the Draco, and has a livable temperature range of 5 to 80 degrees. As mentioned, they like to eat mealwood, but can also eat bristle blossoms. They can be ranched for meat or phosphorite, but it would be easier to simply ranch Dracos if that were the goal, so really the only reason to ranch them is for plastic, but this is still a very good one. Dracos are easily moved by wrangling them. And that brings us on to Draco ranching, and both morphs have a similar design. I am recommending the incubator and critter drop-off method, as explained in the critters tutorial bite, but the overflow room here is used to shear the extra critters before they starve. Starting with the ranches themselves then, they are designed with a split atmosphere. All Dracos need to be in hydrogen to grow their coats, but their food plants cannot grow in it, except for pincher peppers that I wouldn't recommend. That's why there is a lower area for the plants, and a higher area for the grooming and shearing. I've used a simple liquid lock to keep the gases in, and I'm using Atmo suits inside. To set this up, you'll need to pump in hydrogen and chlorine from somewhere else, and possibly pump out whatever gas was already in the space. It is possible to not use suits in the breeder ranches, but if you do this then be careful to manage the carbon dioxide the tubes breathe out. In fact, you could put no hydrogen at all in the breeder ranches, and simply rely on shearing the overflow. That would then let you use a simpler breeder ranch, as I'm showing here. This is similar to a hatch ranch with a door and tile trick, with a little drop of water to stop the Dracos passing the door, but still keeping the room size at 96 tiles. There isn't too much to explain with this design though. Mealwood is needed in oxygen for glossy Dracos, and balm lilies in chlorine are definitely the best choice for Dracos. Remember to disable the auto harvest here in the harvest overlay on the Y hotkey, as the Dracos eat the plant growth and not the meal lice or balm lily flowers produced. I should also mention here that I'm showing the glossy Draco ranch with glossy Dracos in, but if you put normal Dracos in this design, then you will get glossy Draco eggs out. Two auto sweepers and a conveyor loader cover the ranch to remove the eggs, phosphorite, and reed fibre or plastic. Do pay careful attention to the temperature of these ranches too. Balm lilies live between 35 and 85 degrees Celsius, so much hotter than mealwood's 10 to 30 degrees. Draco eating rates have historically been a bit buggy, but this has been addressed in a patch, so you should only need six domestic plants in either ranch. The rails out of the ranches come into these two overflow areas, and for Drecos we can put them in a shearing room full of hydrogen. This means they can fully grow their coats as they slowly starve. Each Dreco should give four shearings before it evolves into meat for barbecue. 
The extra eggs can simply be placed in here and dupes will refill the incubators as needed. Then the extra critters come to this overflow drop off set to priority 8. Remember too that we need to get the Dracos away from the drop off as it has a 20 critter limit. I'm showing two possible designs that you should use one of. And the first to go through is a critter dropper. I explained this in the plug slug tutorial byte too, but if you just open a pneumatic door under a critter, it will just keep walking. So to actually drop the critter, we basically squeeze it in a set of doors. There's a little bit of automation with a critter sensor that activates the dropper when all of the critters in the small drop off room walk out into the trap. You can also add a cycle sensor to regularly clear this once per cycle too, in case many critters are dropped in here at once. If that does happen, then it can become impossible for all of the critters to move out of the room at the same time. So this acts as a failsafe. Another way you can get the Drecos out of the room is by partially submerging it with small amounts of liquid. This is similar to the alternative evolution chamber design that I showed in the hatch tutorial bite. You can only use a small amount of liquid here to not flood the drop off, but this will force the Drecos out of the room to avoid drowning. To set this up, just bottle empty in a little bit of three different liquids, then mop up either side of the door. Make sure to leave the door to the shearing room open. So with either of these designs, all of the extra Drecos will end up in the all hydrogen shearing room for even more reed fibre or plastic. An auto sweeper and conveyor loader in here picks those up as well as any eggshell and meat. These give my full design for ranching Drecos. Use one or multiple ranches with incubators and either one of these overflow rooms. And here is the one take reference for these. Then the last topic to cover is sustainability and output numbers. As you have probably worked out, the Draco Ranch here is completely sustainable and requires literally no resources to run with balm lilies. Every time you shear a Draco, you'll get 2 units of reed fibre, and a full ranch of 8 Dracos should make around 10 units of reed fibre per cycle by fully shearing the breeder and overflow ranches. It will also make a little under 3000 kilocalories of meat per cycle, or about 3500 kilocalories of barbecue, and 80 kilograms per cycle of phosphorite. For the Glossy Draco Ranch, you will need 60 kilograms per cycle of dirt for the mealwood. There are large amounts around the map to be dug up, but a pipped dirt ranch can make 160 kilograms per cycle, so would be enough for almost three Glossy Draco Ranches. Shearing a Glossy Draco gives 150 kilograms of plastic, and a full ranch with overflow will make the same 3,500 kilocalories per cycle of barbecue as the Draco Ranch, and slightly less phosphorite at 72 kilograms per cycle. Plus they make almost 2 tonnes per cycle of plastic, so this is a very useful way to get large amounts of plastic without using oil and petroleum. And that's all for this look at Drecos in Oxygen Not Included. I hope this helps you shear some useful materials, and thanks for watching.